Hello friends, I am Rahul Saha. I have completed my MTech from VIT University Vellore. I also have been a research associate in IIT Chennai. So today I am presenting the specificities of the Q cycle or the ubiquinone ubiquinol cycle. Now before acquainting you with this specific topic, with this intriguing topic, I would like to tell you that I would like to explain to you what are cytochromes because this entire cycle revolves around the specificities of cytochrome proteins. Now, cytochromes, these are the proteins that contain the heme group and are pretty similar to what you have been able to observe in the structure of hemoglobin molecules. There are specifically three types of cytochromes, cytochrome A, cytochrome B, and cytochrome C. They have been classified, they have been demarcated on the criterion of the absorption maxima, how much wavelength of light do they absorb maximally right and there have been various subtypes of cytochromes like cytochrome b a1c a and a3 but out of this all these subtypes there is one cytochrome c which brings extreme attention to itself is known as cytochrome c cytochrome c is specifically a water soluble molecule that's the most intriguing part of it because the other subtypes of the cytochromes like cytochrome p a1 a a3 are all lipid soluble meaning that they would state the third to the inner mitochondrial membrane plasma membrane and only cytochrome c is able to traverse through the medium of the inner membrane intermembrane space the matrix and has also been observed to be present in the cytosol and pay dramatic role in apoptotic pathway as well. Okay, now let's get down to business regarding the specificities of Q cycle. Now, Q cycle, as you can see, has been divided into part one and part two, stage one and stage two. Now, what happens in Q cycle? We have a specific molecule known as QH2, known as ubiquinol. Ubiquinol is a molecule which is at its alcohol stage. We know that from simple, from the general chemistry, that alcohol is the most reduced form, followed by the aldehyde, followed by ketone, and the carboxylic acid is the most oxidized form or oxidized state. Now, ubiquinol is the most reduced form. Ubiquinol is a specific lipid soluble benzoquinone with a long isoquinoid side chain. Okay, so that molecule is generated by complex one and also complex two. So these are the sources of the generation of the ubiquinol. We'll be talking about complex one, complex two, and complex four later down the lane in very, very separate videos. Now, ubiquinol traverses through the lipid bilayer plasma membrane of the inner mitochondrial membrane and gets tethered to the cytochrome C, gets attached, it will form association with cytochrome B molecule present in the inner mitochondrial membrane. You can see cytochrome B and then when it attaches with the cytochrome B, cytochrome C complex, mainly cytochrome B, what would happen is it would start losing electron and why do you see two electrons moving in two different directions? The answer to that question is ubiquinol can only contain two electrons. Okay, it contains two electrons. It has the property of possessing two electrons. But the thing is, the cytochrome molecules, the cytochrome C, B1, B molecules, those molecules can only contain one electron. They can only accept one electron each. So what would happen is there are two electrons which can be traversed or which can be transferred from ubiquinol to any other molecule but here one by one the electron would be traveled or would be traversing as you can see here that the first electron which comes out which gets liberated from the molecule ubiquinol is accepted by the heme bl molecule the heme group present at the cytochrome b molecule now cytochrome b has got two specific heme groups, heme BL and heme BH. And then that same electron traverses to heme BH and then that same electron reduces a fresh and another molecule of ubiquinone, here the ketone group, the oxidized form of the ubiquinone, which also traverses through the inner mitochondrial membrane, lipid bilayer, plasma membrane and attaches with the cytochrome B molecule and then converts it into a semi-quinone radical, okay, Q minus naught, a semi-quinone free radical. Now, the other 
electron traverses to the 2Fe2S center known as the risque iron sulfur protein. Okay, the name has been there because of paying tribute to the discoverer of this protein, Sir John S. Riske. Here, two Fe proteins are coordinated with two histidine residues of the protein. So, two Fe molecules are coordinated with the two histidine molecules or two histidine amino acid residues of the protein. Now, from here, the electron would traverse to cytochrome C1 and cytochrome C1, as you can see, has heme C1 group. The cytochrome C1 is a lot different from cytochrome B regarding the specificity that it possesses one heme group that is known as heme C1, whereas cytochrome B possesses two heme groups known as heme BL and heme BH. From cytochrome C1, the heme C1 of the cytochrome C molecule, the traversal of the electron takes place to yet another molecule known as cytochrome C as you can see in the image. Now cytochrome C again I would be reiterating that it's a water soluble molecule. So we are able to generate one fresh reduced cytochrome C molecule here and in the process two H plus or two protons from this specific ubiquinol molecule would be also pumped into the intermembrane space or IM space. The two X plus or two protons are pumped to the IM space as well. So what do we generate? We generate from ubiquinol, ubiquinol molecule and which will then be deleted or dissociated from the cytochrome B molecule and would traverse through the lipid bilayer of the in you can say inner mitochondrial membrane. And we would also be generating a semiquinone radical and we would be generating a specifically reduced molecule of cytochrome C, which is a water soluble cytochrome. Then coming on to the stage two of the Q cycle, here what you see is what you can behold is the same event almost perpetuating with little bit of differences. Those differences are very, very critical. I'll be explaining it to you right now. What happens is a separate ubiquinol molecule which is generated either by complex one or complex two NADH dehydrogenase or succinate dehydrogenase. They traverse or one of those molecules it traverses and attaches tethers with the cytochrome B complex here again. Again, one of the electron from QH2 would take the root of heme BL and heme BH present in the cytochrome B, which are the integral heme proteins present in the cytochrome B complex. But the thing is, the semiquinone radical generated here, which went to the other phase and returned to the same phase of this, you can say, cytochrome B complex, that semiquinone radical would be accepting one more electron and will be completely reduced. And then two H pluses would be abstracted from the matrix. You can say two H pluses would be abstracted from the matrix or two protons would be abstracted from the matrix. And it would then eventually synthesize or lead to the production or generation of the QH2 molecule known as ubiquinone molecule. So here you can see a specific event, a very, very critical event consequently leading to the generation of ubiquinol molecule. And then ubiquinol molecule QH2 would get detethered or dissociated from the cytochrome B molecule and would then travel through or traverse through the lipid bilayer membrane of the inner mitochondrial membrane. Other electron would again from this specific QH2 travel to the risque iron sulfur protein. Now the other electron from the QH2 or ubiquinol would travel to the cytochrome C1, okay, and then to the heme C1 group of the cytochrome C1, and then it will eventually traverse to the cytochrome C molecule. And when it does traverse to the cytochrome C molecule, uh, you will be again generating a fresh cytochrome C molecule in its completely reduced state, right? And then that cytochrome C molecule would be traveling from this specific complex to complex one known as cytochrome C oxidase. Um, it also contains this 
cytochrome C, the proper atoms and those specificities will be explained in the next video where I'll be explaining to you the entire cycle of the cytochrome C, com C oxidase or complex 4. Now in the process it has lost two electrons and now it will be again pumping out or effluxing two protons to the intermembrane space in the process. Consequence of that process will be 2H plus or two protons will be pumped into the intermembrane space or ion space, right? So what you have got or what you have seen as a consequence of the Q cycle is that we have been able to use two ubiquinol molecules, one in at stage one, one at stage two, but we have been able to generate also one ubiquinol molecule and produce two ubiquinol molecules, one at stage one and one at stage two, right? And what all we have been able to do, we have been able to pump out two H plus at stage two and two H plus at stage one. So effectively pumping out four protons into the intermembrane space. And we also abstract two H plus from the matrix at stage two. And the most important fundamental reason behind the perpetuation of this two H two or you or ubiquinol cycle or Q cycle is the production or the generation of the two cytochrome C reduced molecules. One plus cytochrome C, as you can see, is reduced in the stage two, and another cytochrome C is reduced at stage one, and that will carry the electron and traverse from this complex three to complex four. Okay, and then we'll be perpetuating the cycle at cytochrome C oxidase molecule. So this is all about the Q cycle. I hope you were able to comprehend and decipher the specificities of the Q cycle. Thanks a lot. Let's meet you in the next video.